Hey everyone, it's Laura Christine, the Kitchen Garden Expert, and today we are going to talk about how to start seeds, the basic and beyonds. But before we get to that, please subscribe to my channel, hit that little bell button so you can get notified when I put out a new gardening video, and jump on over to Instagram and follow me. We've got lots of gardening tips, tricks, and a lot of fun little reels on there. So let's get started. How to start seeds, the basics and beyond. All right, let's talk about this little guy. This little seed, though it looks dead, is actually dormant, or in other words, it's sleeping. It is still alive, but he's sleeping. With inside the shell, there is food for once it starts as a seedling for it to help it to grow. Now, how do we get these seeds to germinate or sprout? Well, there are three major factors that are involved with getting this little guy to sprout. And those major factors are heat, moisture, and oxygen. So, first thing I'm gonna talk about is heat. All seeds need heat or warmth. There are different seeds that have different needs of warmth, but they all need warmth. As long as it's above 32 degrees, they will do much better than, you know, if they were frozen. So heat is one factor that helps this little seed come out of its little sleepy time or dormant phase. The next factor in waking up our seed is moisture. Moisture or water. What does that do? Well, it softens the hard outer shell, which allows the seedling to get out, but also allows the water to get in. When that water gets inside that hard shell, you know, softens the shell, it triggers the baby seedling to grow. The last factor is oxygen. Now oxygen naturally comes in with the water. So once that water softens that shell, that oxygen can get into that baby seedling. So let's review real fast. Um, the three factors that are going to help your seeds grow or sprout or germinate or however we want to talk about it is uh, heat, moisture, and oxygen. So now that we know what factors help the little sleepy cell wake up and help it germinate and help it sprout, uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is the growing medium or soil. The soil is kind of the vehicle for the seedling. It's the vehicle for nutrients, it's the vehicle for allowing the plant to uh, basically have healthy growth. It's the vehicle to allow the plant to spread its roots out. It does a lot of good things, provided you have the right type of soil. So now when you're talking about options for a growing medium, some people think that soil would be a good thing because we see things that, you know, seeds fall into the ground and they sprout and they turn into plants. Well, that's good and bad. Um, it, you know, there, there are chances that things can go well, but a lot of times, especially when you're trying to start seeds, it's not a really good idea to use soil. Why? Well, basically soil introduces the possibilities of having disease in certain microorganisms that could eat the seed or uh, you know, do something to the seedling as it grows. So my first tip or my first suggestion is to just stay away from gardening soil or any, any regular type of soil. Uh, it is not beneficial for a healthy young seedling. For me, I use either a seed starting mix or peat, like peat discs, or I make my own. So let's. So a seed starting mix is a commercial, commercially uh, produced mix 
for gardening, for seed starting, obviously. It is sterile, which makes it a great option because it's not going to introduce disease or microorganisms. And these starter mixes are made out of peat moss, perlite, and vermiculite. So if you don't want to buy your seed starting mix from the big box store or make a commercial, you know, use a commercial grade brand, you can make your own. It's pretty simple. Here's the recipe. Okay, so here are some ingredients we want to look at for if you are going to do your own seed starting mix. Uh, first of all, we'll start here, and this actually is a seed starter mix, but I wanted to use this as an example of the peat moss. The peat moss, of course, is the brown. Peat moss is very lightweight, obviously, <laughs> and it's great for drainage. It's neutral. It has neutral pH, which means that you can plant any kinds of seeds basically in this medium. Um, and it's, it's just very good at holding water, too. The downside of the peat moss is the peat bogs. Uh, I don't know if there's a shortage, but um, over the years they've been talking about, you know, it, it does mess up the ecosystem because they have to dig for it, to dig it out of these bogs. So you do have options to use a coconut core, C-O-I-R, if you want, instead of the peat moss. Our next ingredient is this little rock here. This is volcanic rock, and this is called perlite. And perlite, I'm trying to grab some here for you so you can see. Perlite, of course, is a rock, but it's very good at providing aeration and drainage in your growing medium. It also is pH neutral, meaning it, you, you can plant any seeds in your growing medium, and uh, the combination of these two types of ingredients will provide a stable environment for your seed to sprout, germinate, um, and grow. Our next ingredient that we've talked about with the starter mix is vermiculite. And as you can see, this actually is a natural mineral. It's super soft to touch. It's very lightweight. What is great about this stuff is it's super absorbent and it also holds nutrients in your soil or in your starter mix for the seed or the seedling, uh, which is super important. So it also, with all of these three together, provides a stable environment so your seedling can grow. Okay, lastly, we talked about adding a slow release fertilizer to our starter mix. And I've given you two examples here. I don't have my compost ready, otherwise I would show you my compost. Uh, I usually use compost as my number one slow release fertilizer if I'm going to add it to my starter mix. My second choice would be the worm castings here. These are super, super good. High nitrogen, slow release type of fertilizer. And then this last white stuff is called bone meal. Bone meal is high in phosphorus and calcium and also like the worm castings and the compost it is a slow release fertilizer. So sometimes I add it, sometimes I don't. Uh, you know it, it gives you choices if you want an extra oomph to uh, make your seedlings healthy. So our next thing to talk about now that we know a lot more about seeds, what it takes to let them grow, uh, growing medium, what that's made out of. Let's go through our list of what we actually need in order to plant our seeds and get those started for our season. All right, here we go with our list. You need a container. You need a cover for the container. You need a heating mat. You need a light. You need a light timer. And then of course you need your growing medium or soil and you need your seeds. So there's your list. All right, so we're gonna talk about everything that we had on our list. And I'm gonna just show you here what I've got right now. So, 
what you need is you need a tray. These are trays. They do not have holes in them because these trays will hold water. Um, so that's a good thing to have. Here is the heating mat that I referred to, or heat, I always call it a heating pad, but it actually is a heating mat. This is specifically for uh, greenhouse or gardening or seed starting uh, because it is waterproof. So, um, and you will need heat like we talked about. Our seedlings, our seeds will need heat. I purchased this uh, on Amazon. So um, there's your tray, and then I use, these are cells, seed starter cells, um, and I always look for ones that have the holes in the bottom because this allows for drainage, and it also allows when you put your soil in these cells, it'll allow the soil to uh, wick up the water from the bottom tray. So I usually get um, 72 cells, which this is approximately a 21 by 10 and a half tray, so it's 21 inches long uh, by 10 and a half. Um, and that'll give me two, I usually buy the, the trays that are two sections. These are two 36 on each side. Um, so there, those are your cell trays. You can also get a larger size, which will mean basically that you don't have to transplant as much. These are pretty small when you get a seedling and I do have to transplant but you can get a larger size of these seed trays, um, which the next size up, I do believe, is 48. So it's 48 cells per the 10 by 20. Um, so they're probably a little bit bigger than these guys. Next is uh, your cover, which we put this over uh, when we are trying to sprout or germinate our seeds. The cover will come off when 50% of your seedlings have germinated. Um, and I'll show you how, you know, how to do it, but I'll go through the supplies first. Um, so this is your cover. And then we talked about um, lighting, this one part on there. And this is what I use. I try, I do very simple. Um, you know, if you want to go out there and get a grow light, they are expensive grow lights, um, but you can also, um, this is something I got for online. It is an LED full spectrum, and these are um, strip strips. Uh, you can get rope lights that are full spectrum, uh, but it basically gives me the control of what kind of lighting I want for my seeds. Um, and, and this also is fairly inexpensive. Um, this is 16 feet, so it, it was perfect for my little mini indoor greenhouse. And I just, uh, you know, put this up, LED full spectrum color lighting. Um, it gives you the full color of spectrum light. And that's what you're looking for if you decide to go outside the grow light piece. And then lastly, you will need one of these. Uh, I got a very basic timer. Um, I can actually plug two things into this at the same time. Um, the seedlings, once they are germinated, will need between 12 and 16 hours of light. Now that we have talked about seeds and making your own starter mix and your list of supplies, let's look at the actual process of planting and putting all of that together. Check this out. Before we plant our seeds, there are three things that you need to know. Number one is your last frost date. Number two is you need to know the timing of planting your seeds. Number three is you need to read your packet, your seed packet. So number one, your last frost date. That is an approximation of the last time in your area there will be frost. Now number two is the timing. Timing and this seed packet kind of go together. These seed packets are great because they tell you when to plant, like I'm doing onions, for example. And it says here, 10 to 12 weeks before your last frost date. So my last frost date is April 15th, so I'm going to count back 12 weeks, maybe even 10 weeks, and then I will figure out when I will plant my onion seeds. That's where the timing comes in. So for success in germinating your seeds, always pay attention to the last frost date, timing and that 
seed packet with all that information on the back. All right, there are two schools of thought on how to fill up your seed trays. Uh, one is to fill up this tray with about a quarter to a half an inch of water. Put your growing medium or your soil in your cells and then let them set for several hours so the soil will wick up the water into the into the cell and basically make these cells wet. Um, that is one, one option. And to me, that's the longer version. A shorter version is to take your growing medium. Got my, my glove here. Uh, the downside of this part is it's messy. <laughs> but um, I wet down my uh, seed starter mix. And you can see um, it's holding together a little bit. But I wet it down and basically... This is the other option, is to just fill the seeds with already moistened, or fill the cells with already moistened seed starter mix. Uh, then you don't have to wait for your cells to dampen up because this is already damp. Okay, so now it's time to plant your seeds and I've got my moistened, I always choose the moistened soil, and I push it down a little bit to kind of compact it slightly when I'm getting ready to plant my seeds. And I just use a pencil to poke my holes. Um, today I'm going to be uh, planting onion seeds, and I always look at the back of my packet, I'm trying to show you here and it's not to see what the depth is. So this is about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go down my guesstimate, quarter of an inch. And let me get my seeds out. As far as how many seeds to put in the hole that I just made, I a lot of times, and here's my onion seeds, I a lot of times will put two. They're tiny. Um, I look at it as it gives me a chance. You know, if one isn't viable, the other will be. Or if they both come up, then I will separate both of them. I apologize, I'm right in front of the camera. So after you've planted your, your seeds in your little hole, then you just basically cover it up. Pretty simple, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Um, that's basically what I do. So now that this soil is still damp, um, I'm not gonna put any water in the bottom of the tray yet. Uh, I will have to check on my seedlings every day to watch the soil. And you'll know when it starts to dry out, you will see a lighter color, brownish color. Um, and I will just pour maybe a cup or two of water in here when they need water and let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes and then dump the water out of this main tray. So after you've uh, planted your seeds, the next step is to put the dome on and then to put your tray on top of the heating mat. The heating mats usually have a temperature of between 70 and 90 degrees. This one you cannot control the temperature, but it does keep the soil warm. The dome will keep the moisture in. And once I get 50% of, of these seeds to germinate or sprout, then I will take the top off and then I will start introducing light to my seedlings. When you put light on your seedlings, always keep the light two to three inches from the top of the seeds. So let's say this is your seedlings, the top of the seedling, you'll keep your light up about this much. Um, and then you just keep moving, moving the light up as, as the seedlings get bigger. Thank you everyone for joining me today on how to start seeds, the basics and beyond. If you'd like to learn more about gardening, I've got a brand new ebook that's out called Grow Your Garden, The Basics and Beyond. So check it out at my website at kitchengardenexpert.com.
Until next time, have a fantastic gardening day. Bye-bye.